Oh hello there, thanks for dropping by. Today we're going to be looking at this one. It's the Hypnotist by Lars Kepler. <coughs> now this is a piece of crime fiction. Now this is uh, a genre I'm not particularly familiar with really. In fact I've only read four or five books in my entire life. I normally prefer science fiction and fantasy but I will read anything. Um, I've chosen this one because me and my partner are very fond of uh, Scandi Noir crime stuff on TV. Things like The Chestnut Man um, and The Killing, things like that. Uh, crime dramas set predominantly in Sweden, though other Nordic countries do feature. Um, so dark, it's aesthetic. You've got the, the short days because of the, the northern um, situation. A reduced colour palette. You've got the Swedish, typically Swedish culture, which is quite interesting, some of their customs and things like that. So this is written by a Swedish person and is set in Sweden. Saying that though, Lars Kepler is a misnomer. That is a pseudonym for a uh, husband and wife writing duo. Alexander and Alexandra Anderil. Now, this was their first book and was published in 2009 um, and centers where well, it features a detective, uh, one Yuna Lina, um, who then follows through on the next eight books. Um, so, yeah, it's that old adage, um, if something is something works, keep uh, banging them out. Um, but it's it's had a lot of success, apparently. They've sold 15 million copies across the world and been translated into 40 different languages. So I thought this must be something worth reading. Um, so I set about reading the damn thing. Quite a sizable book, um, over 600 pages long. OK, so what I'm going to do is break this down into the kind of premise, what the vaguely what the book's about, um, and then and then I'll kind of criticise it a bit. And then towards the end, I'm going to talk about how I think it could have been better. And so there might be spoilers over there, but I'm not going to give away the ending or anything like that. So don't worry. Um, and then I'll, you know, I'll give you my opinion as to whether you should bother reading the damn thing. <clears throat> OK, so the premise. Um, it starts with a bloody horrible murder of a family, an entire family, the, the father... Uh, mother and a young daughter. I mean, she's like three or four years old. It's bloody horrific. I mean, that's one thing that could be said for this book. It, it they um, they don't hold the punches where the gore and the the really dark um, side of things are concerned, um, and they're all kind of massacred and knifed to death. Um, bloody awful. Um, but the son, the teenage son, um, survives the attack um, and is promptly whisked away to hospital. Our hero, Yuna Lina, the detective, is very quickly on the scene and he very quickly deduces that whoever's attacked this family are, try are intent upon wiping the whole family out. And there's another daughter, uh, an, an older daughter again, I think she's in her early 20s, who they can't find, they can't get hold of. So he is desperate to get some information from this um, poor boy who's just been knifed. He's got hundreds of uh, cuts all over his body and he's in a coma or an induced coma in hospital. So he uh, gets the services of a hypnotist. Now, this is a very uh, implausible situation. I don't think this would ever happen, but... So they force the poor boy out of um, his comatose state and is promptly hypnotised by this ma who who becomes a main character in the book. Um, Eric Maria Bach, he's called. Um, and so he, he goes through the motions of hypnotising. And in so doing, this is a spoiler, he discovers that it's very likely that this teenage boy is the one that's murdered his own family phone isn't on silent professional to the end um so yeah that's not good is it so that happens now following this um somewhere in the in eric's past the hypnotist's past something happened something he was disgraced for some reason and it concerns hypnotism 
Now, we don't know anything about this at the beginning, although we do later on in the book. Um, and so his world starts crumbling apart after he's it, com it comes out in the papers that he's been practicing again, even though he's kind of uh, strong armed into doing it by the detective. His world starts crumbling around him. Um, his his relationship with his wife, whilst already kind of on the rocks, um, goes fully tits up. Um, and, and then on top of that, as implausible as it would seem, his own son, um, Benjamin he's called, uh, again, about a 14-year-old, uh, is kidnapped. So um, at this point in the book, there's still early days, early doors. Um, for God's sake! Um, the, oh God. Um, the, the husband and wife have fallen out. So he's no longer in the marital bed. He's in the spare room and he takes uh, various drugs to sleep because he can't sleep very well. Painkillers, I think. At some point in his life, he's become addicted to pills. Anyway, in the night, someone breaks into the house and injects the wife and the son with some kind of knockout juice, thereby almost killing the wife. Um, and drags the boy off, whisks him away. So very quickly, Una, Lena, assumes that this is connected in some way to the murder, who they know is now the murder of this boy. It's, it's very, it's all bloody nuts, really. It's all over the place. So there we are. That's where it plays out from there. Uh, from this point on, there's lots of different characters that are introduced that may be you know, possible criminals or, you know, they might be responsible in some way. So it keeps you guessing. And and it is undoubtedly a page turner. I did get for it quite quickly, despite the size of it and the fact that I'm a slow reader. OK, so one thing I would say about the writing style of it is quite interesting in that I got the impression that it's written almost as though a hypnotist is talking through the story. So it's it's like it's often using their names um, rather than pronouns. It's um, Eric opened the door and it's like as if you're the narrator is on their shoulder observing everything and, and telling you as though you're being hip, hip, uh, hypnotized in some way. I thought that was quite interesting. I mean, th that may not have been ten intentional. It might be just a consequence of the translation. I don't know. But I, I found that quite interesting. Another thing of note is that the chapters are very, very short. I mean, we're dealing with chapters that are barely a page long at times. So by the end, the, the chapter count is up to, I don't know, let's have a look here. Yeah, 109 chapters. So it that helps the pace, I suppose, in some ways. It's quite nice. Uh, I, I kind of like short chapters in one way. It feels as though you're reading more quickly, but at the same time, the way my mind works, I like to know where I am at the beginning of a chapter. It takes me a lot to invest in it and then play it through. I know where I am. I know who the characters are. And then when you get another chapter, it's like a, a kind of door in the way and I've got to reset. But a lot of these chapters do follow on. They could have been in, they could have been much longer chapters, but they've been very purposefully um, chopped up. It's interesting because in the middle of the book, there's a chapter that's absolutely massive and it dwarfs the size of the other chapters and this is the section where you get to see what happened 10 years before in Eric Maria Bach's um, uh, life um, the thing that happened the thing that disgraced him in his profession that's a very interesting that's a really good part actually and it and it um, sheds light on a lot of the mysteries that you were encountering at, at the beginning kind of implausible as well there's some bloody nuts stuff in it i'm not quite sure how well this was researched to be honest um but i don't know <laughs> um right so yes i've said it's very bloody so yuna lena this, this is interesting that the the detective around whom this all revolves in typically in this kind of fiction the the detective is kind of eccentric in some way yeah I mean that's really really cliche now they're, either they're yeah they're really quirky or they're bad tempered or they're alcoholics or drug users or whatever Yuna Lena he appears to be quite a dogged person so he pushes these invest this investigation on when it's trying to be held back in certain ways 
But other than that, there's not much else to him at all, actually. In fact, there was so little fed into his character that I assumed that the hypnotist was like mid series and that a lot of the character development had done had been done in the early books. But no, this is the very first book. And the fact that he seems to have such little presence in the book is quite strange, considering he then goes on to have seven more books. Other than the fact of that, the only other kind of um, quirk he has is that he's always right. And he likes to let people know, his colleagues, when they've been wrong and he's been right. And so he makes a, a point of it every time he's right. And he'll go, I was right about that, wasn't I? And they're like, yeah, I suppose you were. Yeah, I was right. And I'm thinking... That's a very, it's just a very odd thing. I mean, they're obviously behind his back going, yeah, you're right, you knob. Now, you know, fuck off. But it's, the other thing is, he's not that brilliant. Um, he's not an amazing detective. In fact, a lot of the, the connections are made by the hypnotist, Eric. Um, so anyway, yes, I just thought it was a bit odd. Um, the, de the, de the detective isn't, you know that good really <laughs> um okay so i'll i'll just finish by saying why i was disappointed really so this is a big spoiler in in that the hypnotist himself you know all the way through the book you're thinking maybe he he's the the criminal you know maybe he's behind this in some way and in some ways he is indirectly but i won't talk about why that is but I was hoping that hypnotism would play more of a part in terms of the murdering. So the hypnotism was m more or less, I mean, it relates to the past and what happens uh, to his son. But other than that, it doesn't feature that prominently. I was hoping that the, the murderer would be hypnotizing people, perhaps, and they would be murdering up on their behalf. I thought that would be quite interesting. Um, and at a certain point in the book, there's a gang of kind of children that were kind of enemies of his son, Benjamin. And they, they came across as really shady characters. And I thought they were quite interesting. They, they were emotionless, largely, and doing really terrible things. And so I, I thought maybe they had been hypnotized. But no, not, nothing like that happens in the book. I think that's a missed opportunity, but there we are. That's that's my that's my two pennies piece's worth. Um, right, okay. Finally, the rating. I'm going to give this two <coughs> superstivals out of five. I know I've been a bit harsh here because I initially gave it three, three out of five, just because it did um, tick the boxes of the Scandi Noir aesthetic. You know, the dark, the constantly describing the darkness and the play of um, sodium street lighting on, on, on buildings, things like that. So I, I really liked the, the feel of the book. It's just that the characters all seemed a bit unbelievable. And the, the story itself is so bloody far fetched that um, I kind of lost uh, interest in it. It was also very unpleasant at times, especially towards children. Um, so if, if you're fond of that kind of um, story, then this might be for you. Um, although I'm not, not necessarily fond of it, obviously, but I think when, when the crime is particularly terrible, there is a kind of human interest in, in things like that. I know that it's just intrinsic to most humans, you know, but there's an interest in the macabre. But this, I, I thought it was there for nothing at times. It didn't serve enough of a purpose i'm rambling i'm rambling anyway there we are there's the hypnotist it's my attempt at a review i'm sorry i've, I've got a bloody cold at the, t at the moment um i've got the week off and as normally happens when i have a week off i get something wrong within a couple of days it's quite normal if, i think isn't it because you you're kind of stressed during work and then when you relax all manner of microbes invade you and uh, play havoc with your noggin and whatnot hmm OK, let's leave it there. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back again soon with uh, another episode of something. Cheers for watching, and...
Cheerio.